Hello, everyone, and welcome to my podcast, The Grace, Peace, and Balance by Gabi Abdel Gadir. And this is episode 123. I have an incredible young lady here for you that we're going, where she's going to share a lot about mental uh, wellness. And I will let her introduce herself to you. However, I'll be posting her bio and her social media links, both on Podbean and YouTube. Please follow her, get in touch with her. She has a lot to offer. Thank you. Jamie, welcome to my podcast. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. My name is Jamie Chapel. I am a nurse. I have been a nurse for 20 years. I have a lot of background in med surge, critical care, education. I do have some background in home care and care management. I'm currently working as a care manager for primary care uh, practice, and I love what I do. Beautiful. And then you also are in some committees of, on diversity and you're helping people whose uh, English being their second language. Yes, yes. So I am on the DEI Council. So I work mm -hmm. with individuals who have um, diverse needs. Uh, my master's program, which I obtained in 2011, I had done my thesis on English as an additional language for nursing students. So I did great studies there, uh, did a little bit of work with um, Spanish speaking and uh, English uh, as an additional language. Beautiful. Do you speak Spanish as well? Um, a little bit, but a not. Bit. <laughs> I'm definitely not fluent. But you can understand when they like, uh, obviously you can understand them. Yeah. And then uh, you have eight children. You look like 20 yourself. Yeah, no, I do. I have eight children. Um, my daughter is going to be 25 oh, here wow. soon. And then I've got another one who's 24, 20, 17, 15. 13 and eight. So. Oh my God, that is so amazing. What's your secret? I need to talk to you or like on a different call. I need to know your secret because you look like you're 21 yourself. Oh, that is absolutely yeah. fantastic. So, yeah. okay, tell us a little bit about your childhood growing up. So I grew up in a somewhat dysfunctional family. Uh, my parents separated 11 years when I was 11 years old. Uh, my father is an alcoholic. Um, my mother had her own substance abuse issues. So I grew up in a quite a dysfunctional household um, where there was uh, laden with depression, um, bipolar, um, you name it, we had it. Oh, wow. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that had affected you a lot growing up. Yes, it sure did. It sure did. Um, I actually um, have a little bit of anxiety myself. Um, I am treated for that. Um, not ashamed to say that. Yes. Um, I have a, sustained a lot of loss early on in life, which I do feel has contributed to some of the anxiety, but I am well managed now. Oh, wow. Yeah. Trust me. The, like a lot of people, they're struggling silently. That's mm -hmm. where we have to start noticing any changes that we see in our families, in our children, in our friends, you know, colleagues at work. Uh, it's 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 not an easy thing. I I totally understand. So, um, you spoke on your resume, like on your bio. I'm reading that you had some health issues, like you had some surgeries. Am I right? Yes, yes. Okay. I've had over forty surgeries. Oh my goodness! Um, I was an ill child, so I've had uh, my eye, my ear, my abdomen, um, my wrist. I've had plenty of surgeries. I have a Baja on my right side now. I don't know if you can tell. I, I went no. through six years of speech therapy, so I do pretty well. I'm deaf in my right ear and hard of hearing in my left. Oh, wow. Yes. You've gone through a lot. But were you born like that or something happened that created I was that? born that way, yes. Okay. I was okay. born that way, yes. Oh, at least your parents did take care of you that way, regardless yeah. of their situation. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. good to hear. Um, and uh, before we get into the mental illness, you do have a hobby. I Another do. Hobby. Okay, I talk, do. talk about that. 
So as you can see behind me, I have some greenery and some flowers. Um, my husband and I love to craft wood and flower creations. Okay. So we were planning our wedding in 2021 and we were investigating floral options. And one of the options was wood and flower creations. So we created all the flowers. Oh, of wow. For your own wedding? wedding? Yes. How incredible. Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, I would love to see the pictures of those. Yeah, I, I do have some, I have a website um, that I'm working on right now. I do have plenty of pictures um, for my wedding. I actually had a videographer put together a snippet for me uh, that I could definitely um, post to Facebook. Okay, yeah, because people need to, to know that. See, I didn't know yeah. that about you. We are in the same group, but I haven't, I didn't know that about you. Even I didn't know you were a nurse, I think. Um, maybe I missed that part, but I didn't even know about you being a nurse for 20 years. I, yeah, yeah, that's incredible. Let's talk about mental wellness or awareness or health. Yeah, I feel like there's not enough awareness out there. Um, I work as a care manager right now. Mm -hmm. We're actually working on putting together a behavior health integration team okay. because it's it's quite frustrating, honestly. We have patients that require some behavioral help and they're not receiving a quick enough response. Uh, there are long waiting lists for individuals to get in. So right now it's trying to advocate for those patients so that they can get the care that they need. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to integrate with other services to get them in there faster. Cause now it's about an eight month waiting list just to get yeah. in. Are you serious right now? People could yes. be dead by the, in eight months. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so God. Then we tap into, you know, the crisis hotlines with our patients. Mm -hmm. um, if they, you know, are having a mental health crisis, then we can have them tap into those mental health crisis. Now, I will tell you that there's a caveat to that, that if individuals have substance abuse, you cannot use certain crisis like the mobile crisis that we have in the region that is no. not uh that is not up for use if individuals have a substance abuse problem. So, so it is for what then? Just for people who have anxiety and depression? Yes, yes. Stuff like Anybody that. that may be suicidal or homicidal, yes, yeah. as long as there's no substances. And as, as you might be well aware, that they go hand in hand, you know, depression, anxiety, substance abuse. So it's very, very challenging to be able to reach out to those patients and help those patients get the adequate their care they need yeah. until a crisis actually happens. And Absolutely. that's what we're seeing, unfortunately. Do you notice i have here where i live like i'm in toronto canada i have i feel like since the pandemic i think not only has it multiplied i feel like the mental illness has quadrupled how do you feel in new york how is it in new york since the pandemic oh i feel like it's it there has been tremendous growth um individuals are uh, struggling to leave their home. Uh, they're developing a fear of being around other individuals and it becomes more of a remote setting for most individuals mm -hmm. and apprehensive to even get into the doctors to see the doctor if they're ill, yeah. whether it's mental health illness or whether it's a medical problem, they're really apprehensive because they don't want to get the COVID. They don't want to get the COVID, yeah. And then uh, here, like they, there are so many out there and uh, the homelessness, Mm -hmm. has like quadrupled the mental yeah. illness has and yeah. uh, I know of people they don't want to get into the trains like the subways because they're afraid yeah. of some of the homeless people because when you see them they look very scary some of them like you mentioned they they have substance abuse issues mm -hmm. and things like that so they don't want to go out unless somebody is driving them or they have a car they don't want to get into public transit that's how bad things have turn since the pandemic it didn't do anybody i myself like when we were locked down um i was the first week was weird not going to work but i was working online right i was working mm -hmm. from home second mm -hmm. week i started to feel a little better and i said oh that's not bad i'm in my pajamas i don't have to spend so much money on this and, and that and uh I was fine, but after two months, three months, I started really to feel down because I, I love people. I, I am a people person. I really started to feel down and, um, and so did my son. So it was not an easy time for a lot of us. So once it opened up, it's like 
We don't have to be in the office. I'm working still full time. We don't have to be in the office. It's a hybrid situation, but mm -hmm. I'm in five days a week. Yeah. Yeah. So there are days that is like fully crowded. There are days that it's quiet, but still I am out like five days a week because I miss the human connection. Absolutely. You know, because that did not do uh, people uh, any favor, like the lockdown. It was mm -hmm. way too long. Yeah. Way too long. Yeah. Yeah. So people it, isolation uh, yeah. from, from this pandemic, um, we're yeah. definitely seeing that. We're seeing that some uh, primary care providers have to do home visits because individuals are too have too much fear to leave the home to even come into the office. Oh my God. Yes, there are people still scared to come to come yeah. out. I don't know, like this sitting at home and being locked out. And uh, if you want to do grocery, you have to be like, uh, like masked out and you can't be uh, close to any person. Otherwise you get attacked. You don't stay, don't stand close behind me. And there's a lot of people fighting in the stores, I noticed, mm -hmm. and things like that. And then uh, I also saw a lot of elderly people who started having asthmatic problems from uh, the mask all the time. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Yes. A lot of people had uh, breathing issues because they were wearing the mask all the time. And then I wasn't when I was walking. I, I like to walk in nature. Mm -hmm. When I'm walking, like I park my car, I get off, if, whether it's by the lake or in a garden, I do not, I did not wear the mask and nobody said anything to me. And I wasn't the only one. Tons of people were not wearing the mask when they're connecting with nature. You know, yes. when you go to a store and hospital and pharmacy, it's understandable, but it was not, it did, it did not do up until now. There are people that are hooked with the mask. They still wear them. Eh? Do you mm -hmm. have that? Yes. Yeah. They still. Yeah. It has been lifted here in New York State to wear the mask in the health environment. It is up to the governing agency for the actual hospital or clinic whether or not they're still masking. And our practice is still masking. All of our local hospitals are still masking. Yeah, I think if my memory serves me right, ours was uh, that role was. It does no longer like, you know, you don't have to wear a mask mm -hmm. now, I mm -hmm. think, even when going into the hospital, unless you want to, it's not mandatory anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's that. But it does, it did affect a lot of kids. Oh my God, don't even get me started with young kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot. Did you hear or uh, of any suicides happening since like the pandemic? So I've actually had to call mobile crisis uh, for a couple of individuals who were suicidal because they had so much fear about the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And then when you couple that with being isolated, because we're, we're humans, we yeah. naturally, we need to socialize. Yes. If there's no socialization. Then you get in your own head and things kind of progress and you become paranoid and it progresses into, I can't live this way anymore. And we, we're seeing some, you know, end up in the ED, even nowadays, you know, even after the pandemic has been lifted, we're still seeing that, unfortunately. I know it is, it is, it did not stop. And uh, personally, from my own uh, close network, I know of 18 mm -hmm. who, who committed suicide, 18, only, only four of them. I, I told them, I was talking about it a few uh, weeks ago with someone and um, who is also passionate about um a part of our team actually CLA uh, that only four were in their 50s out of the 18. Uh, the first one was 17 year old and then the rest of them were teens between teens to 26 year old. Okay. It w was devastating. And even me, like I started to have a panic attack, like, oh, this guy committed suicide. Oh my God, that girl committed suicide, especially the young generation, you know, like mm -hmm. even, um, and I started to just be scared when it kept coming. This is what I know, what there could be so many, so much that I don't know, right? Absolutely. Yeah, so we don't know. And I, and what I feel is I don't feel like the government is doing enough to help these people like mm -hmm. who are going through mental illness and who are like using substance abuse or homeless. A lot of people like Los Angeles, for example, I saw a video. This is not the Los Angeles that I know. Mm -hmm. LA downtown was full of tents. 
Yeah, this British guy, he came all the way from England. He videotaped the whole city. And it was very scary to see that because I, I loved LA. Mm -hmm. And um, and one lady was interviewed, believe it or not, she was a legal assistant. She was let go during the, just at the beginning of the pandemic and she could nobody could hire her because everybody is locked down. They were letting people go left and right. She could not find a job. Guess what? Wherever she was renting, she couldn't pay her, her rent for two months. They let her, they kicked her out. She was living in a tent. Wow. A legal, a low clerk, sorry. That's the proper term she used, low clerk. How can a low clerk not find a job? Mm -hmm. That is how bad it was. So like it was homelessness has multiplied and we feel like the government needs to do more you know, housing, solve the housing issues for the homelessness and stuff like that, you know? So yes. that's my personal opinion and your input on that. Um, I agree. I feel like there's not enough resources out there, but I think that as a country, we need to identify mental health as being mental wellness and not mental illness mm -hmm. so that we can look at it from a positive perspective. Yeah. We're not, you know, teased or ostracized if we have cancer, but if we have, you know, depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, we're suddenly ostracized and become stigmatized. And I think it needs to start there. And then yeah. individuals will feel like they can speak and it won't be that elephant in the room. Yeah. You How know? do we notice if someone is has the start or the beginning of mental illness? For me, is like I see if someone was chatty or like very friendly, all of a sudden they start to be more quiet and become mm -hmm. an introvert. Yes. Uh, that is one sign that I see. What else do you feel like you start noticing? So individuals start to isolate themselves or they are paranoid. They feel like somebody's out to get them. Yes. Or, or they are, you know, jittery and not able to really maintain themselves in a group setting. You know, typically they like to be around a lot of people. They may not have been, you know, an extrovert at that one point, but now they're to a point where they can't even leave their home. So that yeah. is, that is a, you know, a trigger or something that we identify when somebody is dealing with any kind of mental illness. Yeah. And then people who never used to be angry when they have anger issues right now, that yeah. is another trigger, like that's another sign, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Oh, God help us. That's all I can say. God help us. Like, and mm -hmm. I, I keep on saying there is something going on in the planet. Like we need to pray. Those of those of you who yeah. believe in prayer, please pray. And the more of us pray or meditate or like stay positive and even help one person at a time. Yes. that uh, yeah that would make a difference in my personal opinion mm -hmm. oh my god that was a great conversation so what is an advice you would give to parents parents well pay attention to your children pay attention to those subtle cues um, any changes in friendships any changes in behaviors um, you know, if they're asking for things that they didn't ask for before in terms of like attention, give it to them. Mom, dad, watch me, watch them. Because if they're looking to get that, that deeming that uh, acceptance from you, and if they're not getting that from you, then they might, you know, become depressed or, you know, or clinically depressed, or they might develop a, an anxiety disorder because they're not feeling accepted, or they may have a lost control. Um, pay attention to those subtle cues. Yeah, that and then they may and they may start looking for attention elsewhere, mm -hmm. and sometimes in the wrong places yes. with the wrong people. Right? Yeah, great advice. What advice would you give to teachers in school? Um, same thing. If they're noticing changes in academics or um, you know social environments, um, reach out to the to the parents. Have a parent teacher conversation. Um, you know, and I I know today it's difficult if we've got working families that. Mind you, some of our families are not working remote, but it's not as easy to come in for a parent-teacher conversation. Have a conversation over the telephone is just as well and, and collaborate, you know, with the teacher and the parent. Yeah, beautifully said. Okay, at work, in the workplace, what advice do you give to, um, to um, people in the corporate? Of, yeah. Yeah, take yeah. both objective and subjective data, um, gather that data, um, collaborate with the provider and uh, resource out as appropriate. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And be understanding if someone wants to take time off, just take time off. You just don't let them go or fire them just because they wanted some time off. Just be understanding. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many, uh, it's like uh, family life balance is very important. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of the corporate companies are actually uh, taking that very seriously. Like the family life balance, you have a sick family member at home, you have to be home to care for them. Either you, you're you able to work from home while caring for uh, children or parents, mm -hmm. elderly, or you can do that. I think a lot of the corporate companies now, they're more aware, I have to say, but I'm not quite sure about schools. Um, I don't know. One of my best friends is a high school teacher. She probably would kick my butt watching this one right now because she is really, really good. She... Um, She's like, she treats her kids, high school kids, like she treats them like her own children. Okay. So, but not all of them are like her. So she's probably not going to be happy uh, me saying that. She goes, what do you mean? I do this. I take care of the kids. No, no, no. You know, like, yeah, mm -hmm. she's going to say that. But uh, yeah, but some teachers don't care and they discriminate between the kids, which also creates, um, creates like, sadness in the kids or not being loved or not being cared just because they have a different skin color or because they come from some day the different culture or something like that i have seen it i'm talking about something that i have seen when my son went through all the the stages and uh, but there are those also who are very kind and compassionate who do not you know discriminate between the kids and things like that so that is why I asked you, what advice would you give to teachers in schools? Yeah, definitely. I feel like there should be, uh, there's uh, attendance policies in schools. And if the child is physically sick, they're able to miss school. I feel like they should implement and integrate a mental health day um, for every student. I know that my, my children, they all get one mental health day a year. That means that they just need to kind of shut down for the day take a mental health day, relax. They're not physically sick. They just need some time. And I tell you what, it really has improved on their attendance. Beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is incredible. Yeah, beautiful. And let's talk about your books. Yes. Yeah, so I co-authored Warrior Woman book. It is a lesson in legacy. There's 14 other phenomenal women that have co-written this book. It's about women empowerment and legacies that we are leaving behind for our children and our family. So lessons that we've learned. Um, my chapter um, happens to actually be on mental health. Oh, so wow. Is it? Is mine is about, yes, yes. And Beautiful. we're going to be releasing it pretty soon here in the next okay. couple of weeks. Okay. Um, we are actually going to be going to New, New York City, Manhattan, uh, Times Square. Um, we're going to be on the Jumbotron. June 13th oh. through the 15th. So oh, we're going to be touring 25 states, um, working with a fantastic publisher, um, perfect uh, book publishing. So we are going to be uh, rocking that book out pretty soon here. Yeah, I can't wait. Yes, I can't yes. wait to get my copy and read. Yes. Okay, and then you're writing a new book solo. Yes. This okay. is a solo author book that I'm working on. It's actually... You know, much of what I've done with the writing, with the co-authoring was very therapeutic for me. So I decided to take it a step further and I'm actually going to be writing about uh, how it is to be a divorced woman and how you manage a household by yourself. Sounds pretty simple, but here I am. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm happily married my second time. My first marriage ended about 10 years ago and I just got married this last year. And there's so much that I have learned over the last decade that we all want to know where a manual is. Well, that's what I'm going to create. I'm going to create a manual for women uh, that have dealt with some divorce and are single homeowners. Single moms. That's what I'm going to work on. Oh, wow. I also cannot wait to get a copy of that. I'm not divorced, but I like I raised my son from the age of eight. Uh, he's 23 now, and uh, my my husband passed away from cancer, and I raised him by myself. And uh, I have so much respect for mm -hmm. single mothers. I only had one child, and it was not easy. I tell mm -hmm. you, can you imagine? 
having four, five, six, seven, eight mm -hmm. kids all by yourself. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for all the single moms out there or the single. I have also met single fathers yes. who raise kids by themselves. I have so much respect for all those dads or moms who raise kids by themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With one child, it was very, very hard. Can you imagine with more than like with a big family? Yes. Yeah. I have. So I can't wait to read that book as well. Yes. Thank oh my you. God, it's such a pleasure having you on the podcast. What one last advice about mental health would you give our listeners or people watching? Identify your self-worth. If you're struggling with any kind of mental uh, illness or mental health disorder, knowing that your self-worth is the most important thing, not letting it identify who you are, your mental illness and rule who you are. So self-worth. Yeah. And then speak up, talk to someone. If yes. you don't want to talk to your parents or to your friends, just talk to someone yes. you trust. Yeah. So uh, it's not a shame to be depressed. It's not, you know, it's not a shame. Like, and then please be there for your friends and for your family, because just because someone is smiling all the time, it doesn't mean that they're not going through a lot behind that smile like I'm one of those people I like to read people uh, yeah. so just notice and and be there for for your friends for your colleagues for your family that is it that was an incredible call thank you so much Jamie thank you so okay I'll be you get in touch with her I'll be posting her uh, social media links and her bio everywhere okay. so get in touch with her thank you so much until the next episode stay blessed thank you